Uh, my name is Raj Adravath, and I'm a product specialist for the Android platform here at Google Play. Uh, today, I'm going to begin our session by talking about the Android Go opportunity and walking through uh, some details about the product uh, since we last spoke about it. I'm then going to invite my colleague Steve to come up on stage and walk you through some of the data that we're seeing to support all the details as to why we built Go, including reasons why you should keep your app small. After that, uh, we'll have Amrit come up on stage to walk through all the requirements that you should pay attention to when it comes to optimizing your app and your game for these devices. And finally, I'm going to have James come up on stage, and he's going to walk you through all the details that we've been doing on the Play Store to make sure that we're delivering a really awesome store experience for users on these devices. So to start things off, Android Go was an ecosystem-wide effort to make sure that we delivered a premium hardware and software experience for users on entry-level devices. Now, in all of the user research that we did globally, we found that users had very specific pain points on these types of devices. Those items included processor speed and quality, storage capacity, and battery life. No matter where we went in the world, in developed markets, in developing markets, users consistently kept coming up with those issues on these types of devices. So we challenged ourselves, uh, along with our OEM partners, to deliver a much more integrated and better experience at this device capability. It's important to remember that Android Go is not a fork of Android. Uh, what we did was we actually introduced a build time flag into the platform that ensures that uh, all devices that are one gigabyte of less or RAM going forward are going to be Go configuration devices. We worked with all of our Google teams internally, from Search to the Assistant, uh, to YouTube and Maps to make sure that we delivered a first-class Google experience as well to users who are on these devices. We also made sure to introduce preload limits. Uh, we definitely don't want to have users unboxing super slow phones the second they buy them. Let's dive a little bit more into storage, performance, and security. Now, again, referencing that user research that we were talking about earlier, we noticed that over 2 thirds of users on devices with 8 gigabytes of flash or less really only had about a gigabyte of, of storage when it came down to it. You can't really do much with a gig of space. It's 2018. I want to take pictures. I want to download apps. I want to play games. Uh, what we realized was we needed to do a better job of actually making sure that users had more storage out of the gate. And what, we're, what, we've, what we were able to accomplish with software improvements was that users now have 2x more storage right off the bat. That's an additional 1,000 photos that they can take on their phone. Now, it would be disingenuous of me to come up here and ask all of you to optimize your apps and your games for these devices if we didn't ourselves actually do the same thing. So we got together with all the different product teams for some of the major apps that you know and love like Search, The Assistant, Gmail, YouTube, and made sure that we delivered a really good experience from Google on these particular devices. Some of our product teams decided to remove some features. Others decided to add specific features for these types of devices. It really just depended on the use case for those particular teams. Uh, one of our most popular apps is actually Files Go. And in that scenario, we realized that we needed to deliver a better job for users in terms of managing space on their phones. Uh, we've been really excited to see some of the, the, pro the, the ratings and the, the excitement that users have with these particular apps. Now, security is at the heart of everything that we do at Android. And one of the things that we launched as part of this was Google Play Protect. Uh, with the rise of peer-to-peer -peer sharing and, and uh, offline usage of apps, we wanted to make sure that users felt very comfortable with the apps and the games that they were downloading onto their phone. Think of Play Protect as a badge of trust that essentially extends the Play brand to let a user know that the app or the game that they're putting on their phone can be trusted to be used on that particular phone. My colleague James will go through more details about what that actually looks like on a user experience for these devices. Now, I'm really proud of all the work that we've accomplished so far over the past year. Uh, but let's take a second to dive a little bit more into the opportunity around why it matters for you to optimize your specific experience for these types of devices. 
This chart right here shows uh, 2017 shipments globally for Android devices, broken down by the, the RAM on those devices. As you'll see on the top right there, about 25% of global shipments every year are devices that have one gigabyte of less or RAM, uh, sorry, one gigabyte of RAM or less. That represents about 300 million devices in the market currently. Now, we expect the number to actually increase throughout the year, but it just kind of gives you a general sense for how many devices you should expect will actually have this configuration going forward. We've seen a ton of interest in the market from all of our OEM partners. Uh, in fact, back at uh, Mobile World Congress in March, we had about six OEMs launch devices. I'm happy to report now we have over 80, M 80 OEM partners uh, committed to delivering devices with hundreds more in the pipeline by the end of the year. Uh, we really cannot thank our partners enough for all the work that they've done to partner with us to deliver a really awesome hardware experience for entry-level devices. I definitely encourage you to go out and buy a device just so you can feel and see just how premium the experience is at such a decent price point. Now, I want to dive a little bit more into the Indian market specifically. India represents the largest market for these types of devices. We expect about 30 to 35 million devices by the end of this year uh, that will have the Go configuration on them. The, the marketing that you're seeing right here is what Micromax is actually using in market to uh, show users just how premium the experience is. And the good thing to call out is that with carrier subsidies, many of these devices are actually under 40 US dollars in these markets. So very, very good price point and still a premium quality hardware. Of course, India does represent the largest opportunity for these devices, but I can't stress this point enough. The US is the second largest market for these devices today. Every time I tell that to people, everyone looks at me with blank stares because it doesn't make any sense. But the numbers prove out that there's a, the US is the second largest market for entry-level devices today. This isn't just a developing market problem or an emerging market problem. This is a developed Western market, first world market problem as well. Users around the world at these price points and at these device configurations want to have a premium experience. And Go delivers that. I'd like to now invite my colleague Steve to come up on stage to walk you through some of the data that we're seeing on the play side around all the information that we see that supports the reasons why you should invest in the opportunity as well. Hi, thanks, Raj. Hi, everyone. My name's Steve. I'm a product manager on the Google Play console. Uh, so Raj just introduced you to Android Go and talked a little bit about all the work that we've been doing to shrink the storage and memory footprint of our Google apps in preparation for it. I want to talk to you a little bit about the importance of doing your bit and the rewards you'll get to your business and your user relationships by focusing on shrinking your app size and thinking small. Now, if you haven't gotten enough data analysis over the last few days, hold on to your hats, because I'm going to show you a bunch of graphs. So as devices have gotten more and more advanced, Developers like you are making increasing use of their capabilities, which is great. It means you're packing in more features than ever before. You're making better user experiences, providing, providing more value to users. But it can come at a serious cost. This chart here that I'm showing, and you might have seen it earlier, uh, shows the average app size served on Google Play over the last 10 years. And you can see very clearly that app size has continued to increase. In fact, it's grown 250% over the last five years alone. And it's still growing. All that increase in size may be materially impacting your user acquisition strategy. App size has a very real effect on conversion rates and the successful download of your app. This chart shows the correlation between app size and user conversion rates. Specifically, when I'm talking about conversions, I'm talking about users who come to the Play Store and tap Install. That's the conversion we're talking about here. Clearly, the heavier your app, you can see app size as the x-axis, the less likely a user will be to install your app, even when we account for things like store listing optimizations. Size has a very clear negative impact on whether or not a user will want to install your app on their device. 
In fact, the data shows that for every six megabytes that increases on an app size, we see a decrease in the user conversion rate of roughly 1%. That trend applies to all apps under 100 megabytes, and it also applies globally. That's a material loss in conversion that could be recovered if you focused on app size. But that's not all. We can also compare country by country. Now, if we compare the percentage increase in conversions by reducing app size by 10 megabytes, we first of all see, uh, by the global average, that worldwide users uh, see more benefit. They tend to install more. But this can vary dramatically country by country as well. Shrinking your app by 10 megabytes in a country like India or Brazil has a larger impact on your store conversion rates than countries like Germany, the USA, or Japan. But if you look across all emerging markets, the removal of 10 megabytes from an app size roughly correlates with an increase in conversion rate by about 2.5%. That's pretty big. But let's, dr let's drill down a little bit farther. Often when we talk about businesses, we talk about conversion rates. But we have a different lens that you might not have seen before, because we're also the ones that serve the apps. So what happens after a user taps install? Well, they still have to download the app. Right? So we, we can also measure what percentage of apps by size actually fully make it to the device, have a 100% transfer rate, and are ready for install. And that's what this graph shows here. So you can see that as app size increases, the success of a download drops precipitously. Now, this could be for a variety of reasons that aren't all shown here. So for example, it might be for environmental conditions. Perhaps in certain parts of the world, network quality isn't as high as we would like it to be. It's not as reliable as we would like it to be. It might also be for user actions. Perhaps the user gets tired of waiting around for a large app to download. Or maybe once they're on the download screen, they see just how large the app is, and they decide to cancel. The blue line here shows apps excuse me, devices that have less than or equal to one gigabyte of RAM, which is the same device profile as the Android Go devices we're talking about. And you can see that the impact is even more dramatic for those sorts of devices. But whatever the individual reason, the action you can take today is clear. Keep your app small. In many parts of the world, users pay attention to app size when deciding what to download. This chart shows the median download size country by country for devices with less than or equal to one gigabyte of RAM. So in countries with cheap data or cheap storage or strong network reliability, we see that users have a natural tendency to prefer larger apps, which you can see in the blue. But in many markets, particularly across Africa and Asia, we see a clear trend towards smaller apps. But just to re reiterate Roger's point, this isn't just an emerging market problem. If we look at that median download size again, we can see that the US is roughly right in the middle of our global minimum and our global maximum. So this implies that roughly 50% of users in the US and countries like it also are more likely to prefer smaller apps. The US is the second largest market for Android Go devices globally, and I think these numbers sort of help to, to support that statement. So you might be saying to yourself, what's the point of this part of the presentation? Is Google really trying to tell me to remove features from my app and, and try and make my app small by doing that? Not exactly. What I'm trying to do is paint for you a, a larger picture of the decisions and the factors that you should weigh when considering what to do in your app next. Some of your decisions might, might cause you to lose out on quality installs and prevent users from installing your app. I'm now going to pass it to my colleague Amrit, who will dive more into the details of how to optimize your app for Android Go. Thanks. Thanks, Steve. I'm Amrit Sanjeev. I'm a developer advocate at Google based in India. And in this session, I want to talk about how you can optimize your apps to make them Android Go ready. What we've learned working with our partners is that when they actually optimized their apps for Android Go, it just did not benefit only the users who used Android Go devices. It did help everyone who was using their apps. It worked with people who were in emerged markets as well as using high-end devices. As you'll hopefully see, tuning these apps with these requirements will enable all your users and will bring a lot of benefits for you. Let's walk through some of the technical requirements here. 
Firstly, you need to set your target SDK to 26 or above. This will not only ensure that you deliver the latest Android experience to users, it will also allow you to comply with a play policy change that requires you to set the target SDK to N minus 1 API level, where N is the latest Android API. If you're targeting a version lower right now, you need to ensure that you test your apps thoroughly to make sure that there are no breakages or functionality changes be because of this API change. There are some behavior changes in API 26, and you need to account for that. Limitations like background processing, location updates, notification changes are some of the examples of reasons where you might want to test more thoroughly. The second requirement is reduce the APK size. For apps, we require you to make it less than 40 MB. And for games, that's extended to 65 MB. That's excluding the secondary downloads. When I say 40 MB, that's kind of the upper limit that I'm talking about here. You need to make it as small as possible. Here are some of the things that you could do in order to reduce your APK size. Firstly, remove all unnecessary code and unnecessary libraries that you have added into your build. Ensure that the libraries that you're adding are mobile optimized and not server side ones. The drawables in your resource folder, they need to be optimized for both size as well as for format. If you're, if you're looking for backward compatibility and you're adding support v4 modules, ensure that you're adding only the modules that are required by the application that, and not all of them. In case your app has audio resource files like .wav files, try converting them to MP3 or AAC, which are much smaller formats, thereby reducing the APK size. But it's not only about changing these things. You also need to measure them, right? So if you're using a traditional APK format, you, need, you can use the Android APK analyzer that's shipped along with Android Studio to check the sizes of the APK and also compare your APK against the previous one as you make changes to see how well you're making increments in this one. If you're using the new app bundle format, then you might want to use the bundle tool and check the size of the splits here. We all know that entry-level devices are RAM constrained. So you need to check all your key user features to ensure that they run properly without any issues on a 512 MB RAM device. ANR, janky frames, out-of-memory exceptions are things that you've got to watch out for. So test your apps thoroughly before you release them for these problems and fix them proactively before you send it out in the market. Once you've actually put it out there in the market, you need to observe and reactively fix issues as they come. Android Vitals, which James will actually talk about later on, Firebase Crashlytics, and Firebase uh, Performance Monitoring Tool are some of the SDKs that you could use in order to do this reactive part really, really well. Let's take a le look at the requirement for RAM usage. Startup memory in your apps should be less than 50 MB. And for games, that's extended to 150 MB. I want to be clear that what, when I'm talking about RAM usage, I'm talking about the proportional set size here, or PSS in short. PSS is basically the sum of the private memory your app is using, plus the proportion of the shared memory with other processes. Test all your key user journeys and optimize them for memory usage and make the memory footprint as low as possible. A common way to find this PSS number is to use the meminfo command uh, that you could run from the ADB shell, or you could use a debug memory class and programmatically calculate this. Let's move on to app startup time here. The requirement here is that app should start in less than five seconds. When I mean startup time in five seconds, what I mean is be fully interactive in less than five seconds. We all know that quick starts are key to avoid early uninstalls and abandonment. A quick startup time is key in building a perception that your app loads fast and is fast for the user. As a general rule, you need to ensure that your app is perceived to be fast on these devices. In order to measure the app startup time, you could use the Firebase Performance Monitoring SDK, which actually calculates this automatically and shows it on the Firebase console for you. We're extremely proud of the work our partners have done in order to reduce size and improve performance for their, for their users. We can't thank them enough for partnering with us on this initiative and in providing a fast, performant, 
and rich experience for their users. I'm going to now show you a video that our team has put together highlighting the experience Flipkart team had while they were optimizing their app for Android Go. Let's take a look. Flipkart is India's leading e-commerce player. Its mission statement has always been, how do we enhance the living experience, the lifestyle of Indian users? by bringing the most affordable and most quality products to all sections of the country using technology. One of the biggest learning from our user base was a lot of these devices were actually with less than one GB of RAM, where people were actually aborting their journey because the phone could not handle the storage or the computation requirements. So we launched our Android Go application. If I can load my pages faster, I can give those additional milliseconds back to the user, which can actually give the user a much better experience in their shopping journey on Flipkart. The app install size, as per the Android Go guidelines, needs to be less than 40 MB. And with some good guidance from the Google team, we have brought that down. We are using Android Studio Refactor and ProGuard, so which is helpful for reducing resources and code base. Apart from that, we are also using WebP, which is giving us 20% reduction in the image download size. So the guideline that we received was the proportional set size should be less than 50 MB. So we did a lot of resource allocation changes in our core base. We reduce our memory cache size from two screen to 0.5 screen. We reduce our bitmap pool cache size from four screen to one screen. Working on the Android Go app for Flipkart, our app has become much lighter. It has become more performant. The existing user base, we've actually seen the uninstall rates go down by 34%. Our latest app versions now crash almost 10 times less as compared to our older versions with an average rating of 4.4 plus. A lot of effort has gone behind reaching that milestone. We are excited with Android Go that we'll be crossing the 200 million very, very easily and very, very soon because we believe the next set of online users are actually going to come on devices for which Android Go is the right medium to approach. So if you're an app developer and if you're building for India, just go get out, understand your user, try to make your technology tailor to those needs, and then you would have an app which would be loved by your users. We are so proud of the work Flipkart and all our partners have done in order to optimize their apps for Android Go. I would like that now, I'm going to now hand over the stage to my colleague, James, who is going to talk, with you, talk to you about the play updates. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, everyone. I'm James, and I'm a product manager on Google Play. I work on initiatives like Android Go, the emerging markets, and end user optimizations. And I'm really excited to share all the work that the entire Play team has put in over the past couple of years to deliver a quality Android experience to our users. Let's dive into the work we're doing in the store. I'm going to chat a little bit about end user experience and then optimizations and improvements we made under the hood. And then I'll tell you guys about some of the tools that we've developed for you to make it easier to build on Android Go. A key point that I want to make today is that there is no Go version of the Play Store. It's just the Play Store optimized for Go the same Play Store on every device. We did this deliberately because we think that the optimizations that we can make should be, uh, the customer should be able to take advantage of those optimizations on any device that they may be on, whether it be a Go device or a Pixel. We aren't limiting the catalog on Android Go, so users get access to any title that you choose to distribute to them, whether your distribution settings be limited by location or by device type. So we kind of need to set the example. You've heard today over and over that small matters. We went out over the past year and have more uh, chopped the Play Store in half from a size perspective. And we're now just at or below 10 megabytes on all devices globally. It's an accomplishment I'm super proud of. Users in emerging markets have made it ultra clear to us that mobile data is their currency. So, we ran a couple of tests, and we showed how expensive any app download is on a card and on search results. And as you could imagine, users opt for smaller apps, even if a rating may be lower. So 
in a couple of places, we actually replaced where we previously had an APK, uh, an app rating with an app size. We found that showing the APK size increases install rates and, more importantly, user engagement over time. Remember what Steve said earlier. APK size does have an effect on install conversion and successful install rate. And with the, with the <clears throat> rise of offline and peer-to-peer -peer sharing, Play wanted to ensure that users could still trust the apps and games that they got from us, no matter where those apps came from. That's why we introduced Play Protect. You can think of it as a badge of security that users will know and trust. So what this does is it gives users, device, it gives users on any device type confidence that they have a safe and secure app experience when they're in, interacting with these apps in the context of play. How did we do it? We wanted to make sure that an app can be trusted on a user's device, so we started to attach a very small bit of security metadata to every app and game that we publish. Then what we can do is if a user acquires an app offline we, uh, or via peer-to-peer, -peer, we can use Play Protect to, to read that security metadata and determine an app's authenticity and verify its source. You, as a developer, get the added benefit of being able to service those apps because we will bring them into the user's Play library and we'll be able to update those apps in the future. It's a major pain point that we know you've relayed to us and we're excited to address moving forward. APK size, the downstream metrics that come from it, installs how long a user may keep an app on their device. And APK size getting bigger over the past 10 years caused us to really take a step back and evaluate ourselves. And we said, what can we do to make this situation better? Well, uh, through that analysis, we came up with Google Play Dynamic Delivery. Today, you can use Android App, Android app Bundle to benefit from a smaller app without needing to refactor your code. The App Bundle also enables future modularization. What it does is it reduces your app at the moment the user installs the app and allows you to load dynamic feature modules on demand at the point when they're needed further down the road when the user is engaging with the app rather than making sure there's lots of pressure at install time. The Android App Bundle, along with Google Play's dynamic app delivery, ensure we deliver apps of the future that are modular, instant, and dynamic. We've also tuned the Play Store's personalization algorithm to show smaller apps on lower level devices. And as you could imagine, this increases engagement because downloads are more successful and smaller apps run better on these entry level devices. This is evident in all the data we've collected on user behavior, and it's key to think about how size will affect App Store ranking for these users. We've done a bunch of feature improvements for the store. For example, when a device or when a user is near device disk capacity space, we suggest to users removing apps that have either never been opened or haven't been used in a long time. You can see on the screen here, we show a mock <coughs> of uh, apps that are uh, of a specific size that haven't been used from least frequently used to most frequently used. And we give the user who's trying to install your app an opportunity to delete an app that is stale or, they, or they've never used. And that gives them an opportunity to have a better experience with your app. Another thing that we recognized we were not serving our users in the best way was the notion that a lot of users manage app installs when they're on Wi-Fi. Well, we thought we could do better. So we created Play's Wait for Wi-Fi feature. It's a known usage pattern everyone sees all the time, but we thought Play could do a better job of, of serving this particular user need. Data management is important to these users. So if today, if a user is on Play via a mobile connection, they can either, when they hit install, they can either choose to install that app immediately or delay the download until their device connects to Wi-Fi and will initiate the download in the background and alert them when the, when the download and install is complete. This gives users more control. It saves metered data. And most importantly, it saves money. We also 
took a look at ourselves and realized that we weren't doing a very good job from an offline or a connectivity tolerance point of view. So we built a couple of additional features. The first one is when the Play Store is on Wi-Fi, we cache a larger percentage of the most visited parts of the store. So what that means is, is if the user turns mobile data off, or their connectivity is crummy, or their connectivity is spotty, we can actually serve a greater percentage of the store directly from cache. This is great because it works offline. It's also great because it's a super fast experience for our users. Then when they reach the edge of the cache, they're offline, and they can't bring up any additional pages, we've built another feature that allows the user to opt into a notification that will bring them back to that part of the store that they left once their device establishes a, a connection again. This is a great opportunity for the user to get back to play to download your app. All the features I just walked through are designed to give end users a high quality store experience. But I also want to reiterate that we have tools available for you to help you optimize your app for these Android Go devices and these markets. The first, which, you, which no one in this room should be unfamiliar with, is Android Vitals. Uh, Android Vitals gives you an insight into ANRs and crashes, and it's, in, it's paramount for understanding the stability of your app, battery, and the most important part is that Android Vitals performance impacts your promotability on the Play Store, especially in the context of search and discovery. We also introduced a flag, as Raj previously spoke of, called Islo RAM that allows you to adjust your app's UX and distribution choices. We want you to optimize for maximum distribution. Here's an additional tool to help with that. We've also included details about Android Go devices in the console pre-launch report. This allows you to check on your builds and understand how they're performing on actual Android Go devices on test beds before you release to market. Be sure you incorporate a regular cadence with the console pre-launch report as part of your normal QA and release management process. So you guys have been to a lot of meetings. You've heard a lot of things. And if you've been on your phone the last 25 minutes, the four things you need to remember. Android Go is a huge opportunity. Keep your apps small. Play is doing everything we can to improve app, or excuse me, you should do everything you can to improve app quality by levering, leveraging the Android tools. And Play, Play is delivering a focused experience for these users. Thank you, everyone. If you have any questions, the four of us will be up here at the front looking forward to hearing from you.